So I saw this story, and it, it's interesting. Whenever I I see a story in sports, Joy Taylor's joining me, I, I always try to revert back to, I, I've said this before, if I was an athlete, how would I act? Like Kevin Durant's agent comes on in 40 minutes. I would not have left. I'm not saying I'm Kevin Durant, so that's not analogous. But I wouldn't have left a great coach, a great roster, a great teammate. I think that's a bad call as a professional. But, yeah, do what you want to do. I don't care. Um, but here's a prime example. So an NFL executive is complaining to Peter King, two of them, that they're mad that Roger Goodell will hand out punishment if anybody badmouths the idea of a draft. Says the executive, the anonymous executive to Peter King, why on earth would you ever threaten an opinion? Whatever happened to freedom of speech? It's freedom of consequences, chief. You got to figure that out, Mr. Executive. Let me ask you this, Mr. Executive, who complained to Peter King. Do you want uh, 26 different people in your organization calling up columnists and talk show hosts before the draft? Or would you like to have one message to the public? Wait, my bad. Yeah, the NBA had a general manager that just went out on his own on a China democracy topic. The league lost $600 million. Listen, all you people that seek attaboys on Twitter, we're going into 15% unemployment. Your newspaper, people are no longer doing ads. LA Times, advertisers, done. Stay off Twitter, support your company. Stay employed, support your family. Companies are going to have to make really tough choices. Roger Goodell is seeking what Belichick seeks and what every CEO seeks in a crisis. Alignment. We think long and hard. We hold meetings about stuff, and then we decide as a company, this is what we're doing. If you want to be a Lone Ranger, move on to a different industry or a different company. But the NBA, Adam Silver, let everybody have an opinion on China the hell happened lebron got ripped steve kerr talked and then backed out he got ripped and i love steve kerr and i love lebron and daryl morey talked and lost 500 million dollars for the league you're not selling out if in crisis you will align right behind your leader and say you know what we'll get pushed back on this because there's a lot of people on twitter although 22 percent of the country is all that uses it and six to eight percent of that 22 percent actually are active users there's enough people out there that are pc that are drama kings trying to get attention they'll make something out of nothing the draft is a phone call business so is free agency so is releasing the schedule of course you go with it roger goodell saying we're in crisis and when Facebook is in crisis, Mark Zuckerberg's doing most of the talking. And Bill Belichick doesn't let his assistants talk. And now Adam Silver made a big mistake not calling everybody, owners, GMs, players, and saying, listen, this, this is tough. This is a situation where I'm protecting you from yourself. Here's what we're going to say on the China, Chinese democracy issue. Nothing. We don't want to lose $700 million. We don't live there. It's not our form of government. And I know a lot of you are like, you're just selling out. All right. Okay. My shows are mostly sold out. I can live with that. But this idea that the NFL execs are, a couple of them are mad and now whining to media people, ask yourself this, executives. Before the draft, do you want people having opinions all over media platforms about who you guys are taking? Oh, wait, you don't. You don't want that. You want to keep it really, really quiet. In fact, I would be shocked if Howie Roseman of the Eagles and Tom Telesco of the Chargers and Chris Ballard of the Colts have meetings regularly on, hey, this is what we're saying and this is what we're doing. You think anybody's giving away their secrets to Mel Kuyper or me? God, no. I know, I know GMs. I've had dinner with them, lunch with them. Anytime I ask about their first round pick, they get vague. They can't make eye contact with me. They're, yeah, we like everybody. I swear to God. Because I know they've got a company policy about the draft and they're not going to give it out. So Roger Goodell is just saying, we don't want the NBA China mess. I watched it. It was bad. They lost hundreds of millions. Stay behind it. Let's keep our TV partners at NBC happy and CBS happy and Fox happy and uh, ESPN and Disney happy. That's who pays the bills, not Twitter. Alignment behind us. It's not selling out. It's selling. It's selling your business to your broadcast partners. Call me a sellout. 
But I got news for you. We're going into tough economic times. You want to be a Lone Ranger, knock yourself out. I'm behind my company. They're going through a crisis. That means I'm going through a crisis, and I'm here for them. You go get the attaboys on Twitter. At Roger Goodell, not interested. I want to say this. The most captivating player in the NFL draft to me is Tua. I've told you before, archive this, John. Uh, he's my number one quarterback. Now, I think Joe Burrow's a very good player. I think if Tua remains healthy, he's Drew Brees. Uh, I never bought into Baker as Drew Brees. I think, I think this is Drew Brees. Athletic, but really a pocket passer with a perfect temperament. So the story is uh, he's fully cleared and ready to compete. Uh, he passed his fourth medical checkup on his surgically repaired hip. Now, here's the thing about Tua. There's a lot of injury talk. He broke a finger. I don't care. He had two ankle surgeries. I frankly don't care much, and I'll tell you why. Because in both of these surgeries, they were called tightrope surgeries on his ankle. He didn't necessarily have to have them. But they clean it up and you heal faster. It's one of these things you wouldn't have done perhaps years ago. I'm not a doctor, obviously. But these allowed him to get back and play LSU, the tightrope surgeries. Ankles, everybody that plays NFL football has a shoulder or ankle or knee injuries. I don't worry a ton, a ton about those. Now, I do worry about his hip injury. That scares me. Uh, that's kind of the Bo Jackson thing where suddenly you wake up and can't play. But I will say this. With certain athletes, let's take Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose was all about athleticism. He was never, still never, a great shooter. Much like John Wall, it's his speed that carries the day and his athleticism. John Wall and D. Rose are not great shooters. Same with Westbrook, who's better than both. When their athleticism goes, if, if, if Westbrook started having knee problems, his game would erode quickly. He needs, needs good wheels because he's not a pure shooter. Steph Curry, meanwhile, could play forever. You know, guys that live on shooting, Steph Curry could play for, Dirk Nowitzki can play forever because he can shoot. Here's the thing about Tua. If you look at Tua's strengths, they're not tied to athleticism. It's a beautiful, accurate football, tremendous leadership, uh, can seize the field, has a pocket presence, uh, throws a feathery, soft, uh, deep ball. Uh, he has a very, very quick release. If he was um, more Russell Wilson, maybe, uh, you know, like Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz can live without running, but boy, it helps. Russell Wilson can live without running, but boy, it helps. Two is a pocket passer with a great touch, who's a great leader, who's great pre-snap, who sees the field. He's not tied to athleticism. Like some quarterbacks are. I, I'm rolling the dice. He's my number one. I'm not too worried about ankle stuff. Pro athletes hurt ankles all the time. I'd still take Tua at number one. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.